Okay. Should be recording now. Yep. Okay. Close that. Get that out of the way. And let's look at number 20. Okay. Glenn Company. I think we saw this one before in the Chapter 4 quiz. This one looks familiar. Uh, Glenn Company purchase merchandise inventory with the cost of seven thousand credit terms two ten net thirty. What is the net cost of the goods if Glenn Company pays within the discount period? So again, I'm of the opinion that if you write the whole transaction down, it's much easier to come to the right answer. So you go ahead and you do what? You debit inventory seven thousand. You credit accounts payable seven thousand, right? Okay, and I sit there and I look at the inventory, tee it up. I look at the, I'll just put accounts payable over here. Accounts payable, tee it up, right? Okay, then what? Then they tell me that I pay within the discount period. So if it's a $7,000 invoice and I'm going to get what discount? 2% discount, that's a $140 discount, isn't it? Okay, so when I go to pay the invoice, I will do what? I'll debit accounts payable for the full 7000 right? Because I'm paying that off. I get rid of that. I credit the inventory for the discount. 140 because I didn't pay the full 7000 for that. I got a discount on the inventory, didn't I? Okay, and when I credit the inventory for 140, the balance comes to 6860, doesn't it? And so that's the amount of cash that I'm going to send the guy. The supplier is 6860 cash. That's how much cash he gets. But the net cost showing in the inventory account is the 6860, the balance. Okay. Okay, good. Jake's Market recorded the following events involving a recent purchase, blah, blah. As a result of these events, inventory increased by, again, your best bet is to tee up your inventory and just follow the bouncing ball as you go through all of these different uh, transactions. Okay, so I received goods for what? 50000 So I debit inventory 50000 but then I turn around and I sent back a thousand, didn't I? So when I spend back, send back a thousand, I credit the inventory a thousand. Okay. Now let me let me catch myself up here um, with my accounts payable. Also, accounts payable, I would have sat there and credited it for fifty, and then debited it for a thousand for the stuff I sent back. So right now, accounts payable has got a balance of 49000 Okay. Then what? Then I paid 250 freight on the shipment. When I pay the freight on the shipment, I do what? I debit inventory for 250 and I credit cash, don't I? The shipping costs get added to the inventory when the buyer pays it. So that's going to be an add of 250, a debit of 250 to the inventory. And then I pay within the discount period. Well, right now I owe them 49,000, don't I? So if they give me a discount of 2% on 49,000, the discount is what? 0 0.02 of 49,000. Notice the discount is taken on the payable, isn't it? Not on the balance in the inventory account because that includes shipping charges and stuff like that that I'm not getting a discount on, right? I'm getting a discount on what I owe the guy, which is 49000 So that 49000 times 2% is 980 So I go ahead and I, what, credit the inventory for 980 because that's where the discount's going to come out of. So when I pay the guy, I go ahead and I do what? I debit the account payable for the full, what is it, uh, 49000 I debit the account payable for 49000 I credit the inventory for what? 980 don't I? 
and 49,000 minus 980 is the amount of cash I'm going to have to pay, which gives me what? 48,020, like that. 2% discount on the payable, right? The discount's on the payable. The guy said he'd give me a discount. I got to see what I owe him to figure out the discount, don't I? That discount comes out of inventory. Okay, so the net cost of the inventory then is the what? 50,000 minus the 1,000 I return, which is 49,000, plus the 250 shipping charge minus the discount, right, of 980? What's that come to? 48,270? Why isn't the 250 for a credit card? Why isn't that um, effective in the Because I paid cash for the delivery charge. I probably hired a drive, hired an Uber guy to bring it to me, or Lyft guy to bring me the stuff. So I paid him cash, 250 It's not part of what I'm paying the shipper. I mean, what I'm paying the supplier, excuse me. I'm paying the shipper that. The supplier said, here's your stuff, come get it. I'm like, really? Yeah, come get your stuff. Okay, I hired a Lyft guy to go pick it up, and I had to pay him 250 that's added to the cost of the inventory. But it is not part of the discount. The discount is on what I owe the invoice, right? So anytime you're trying to get the discount, it's on what you owe the supplier, right? There's no discounts taken on the shipping charges. Look, guys, stop looking at this like an alien landed. 50000 is what I owed the guy, right? But I sent the 1000 back. So how much do I owe him? 49000 He's going to give me a discount if I pay him early. I pay him early, I get a 2% discount on the $49,000, do not I? I didn't pay the full $49,000 for that inventory. I paid what? I paid $6,860. I paid $6,860 for that inventory, didn't I? I mean, wrong question. I paid uh, the credit to cash on that one. I paid what? I paid 48020. 48020 plus what? Plus the 250 for the shipping. That's what happened in the inventory account. I started out with the 50. I sent a thousand back. I added the 250. I subtracted the discount, didn't I? So I paid what for that inventory? Look at the two credits to cash. Cash got credited for 250. Cash got credited for what? For 48020. That's the answer to the question, isn't it? The two credits to cash added together. That's what I paid for that inventory. Add the shipping charges. Don't take the discount on the shipping charges. Take the discount on the invoice, right? Okay, the collection, number 22, the collection of a $4,000 account with a 2% discount will result in, this is an easy question to fall into a hole. Easy question, you don't spend the time with it, you fall flat on your face. So what happens? If I'm sitting there and I have what? I have a invoice of 4,000 okay if I have an invoice of 4,000 when I pay that off I'm going to debit the account payable 4,000 right right but I'm going to get a 2% discount 2% of 4,000 is what uh, $80 so I'm going to credit the inventory for 80 right and I'm going to credit the cash for the balance, which is going to be, what, 3920 That's how you answer that question. You sit there and you start using your imagination. And you'll do something silly like, 
Debit to sales discounts rate. Yeah, that's what it is. I debit sales discounts when I'm giving the discount, not when I'm taking the discount, which is what was going on here. Okay. Debit to accounts receivable. Oh, now I got to shut up. Am I paying? No, I'm collecting. Let me shut up. It's been one of those nights. I'm going to go to bed early next week. I debit accounts receivable, guys. I'm collecting for four thousand, and credit what? Sales for four thousand. I thought they were the person that was buying the stuff. They're the person selling the stuff. Okay. And then if someone pays within the discount period, it's a two percent discount. So I'm going to do what? Credit uh, accounts receivable for the full four thousand. I'm going to debit cash for what? How much? 3920 I'm going to debit the cash for that because there's the discount. And I will debit what? Sales discounts. Sales discounts for the 80 So is there a debit to sales discount for 80 Now when you do it, know which side of the transaction you're on. We were the seller here. And you do it that way, it is what? It is easy to see what the right answer is. It is also easy to say that it's not a debit to accounts receivable. It's a what? Credit, because it's being paid for the full 4000 It's not a credit to cash. It's a what? Debit to cash. It's not a credit to accounts receivable for 3920 It's a credit for the whole amount, isn't it? Because we're liquidating that. Okay. So an easy way to make the mistake would be to not know that you're the seller instead of the buyer. But after you got past that mistake, an easy mistake would be to just sort of try to figure it out in your head without making the full journal entry, right? Question? Okay, good. Our company's financial information is presented below. And they want you to tell them what the net sales is. They want you to tell them what the gross profit is. The way you answer this is by doing them patiently, one at a time. Who wants to set this up? You want to set it up? Okay, good. This is your, this is your area of expertise now, right? Okay, go ahead. Good. Sales minus the sales returns and allowances. Sales minus the what returns they told us, or what, 20000 Minus, okay, no discounts, right? Boo-hoo, we don't get to do the discounts. But that makes this, what, 450000 is the net sales? Okay, good. Now, this question was made way too easy because you just had to calculate the net sales to get the answer. So there should have been more than one that had 450,000 in it. Okay, so we know A is the right answer because that's the only one that's calling out net sales is 450. But how about the gross profit? Good. Well spoken. So it's cost of goods sold right here. Okay. So what do I do with that? Subtract it. 270,000. That gives me gross profit of 180. Guys? Good. You want to try the gross profit percentage for number 23? Sure. Since you asked so nicely, I will. You want me to go over it or you want to figure it out? Okay, well, we have the sales revenue, don't we? Well, first of all, I'm just going to tell you what it is. Gross profit percentage is net sales divided by what? I mean, ah, sorry, is gross profit divided by what? 
net sales. Okay, so we need the net sales. So how do you give me the net sales? Good. I've got the two million return. I mean, I got the two million sales. I got the return. Return is what? 360. And the discount is 40. So that's 2 million minus 360 minus 40,000 gives me net sales of 1,600,000, you say? Okay, good. So there's my net sales, 1,600,000. I got my net sales. Can I calculate the gross profit? Good. I take my net sales and now I subtract off the cost of goods sold, right? So my cost of goods sold, where do I want to write that? I guess I'll just write down here. Cost of goods sold, they told me was what? 1,120,000. So 1,120,000 subtracted from my cost of goods sold gives me gross profit of Good, 480,000, okay, and I'm going to do what with that 480,000? Divide it by the net sales. What did you say it was, 480,000? That gives me 30%. Gross profit divided by net sales. How do you get net sales? Sales minus returns minus discounts gives me net sales. We said that 52 times the other day, right? That gives me net sales of 1,160,000. How do you get gross profit? Net sales minus cost of goods sold. We said that 72 times the other day. Gives me what? The gross profit? Gross profit percentage, we said once the other day, is what? Is gross profit divided by net sales. Number 24, warehouse 13 had net credit sales of 750,000. On January 1st, 2013, allowance for doubtful accounts has a credit balance of 16,000. During 2013, 29,000 of uncollectible accounts receivable were written off. Past experience indicates that the allowance should be 10% of the balance in the receivables. Oh, let me stop. Go ahead. Not that this is important or anything. Past experience indicates that allowance should be 10% of the balance in the receivable, percentage of receivable basis. So they're basing it off the receivable, aren't they? Okay. If the account receivable balance on December 31st was 200000 what is the required adjustment to the allowance for doubtful accounts? If they're looking at the receivable balance, it's the balance sheet approach, isn't it? So we're going to just put what we need to get it to what it needs to be. Okay. Now, what happens? We're going to have to figure out, though, what happened to the allowance account during the year. So it started out with a what? Balance of sixteen. And then during, 29, uh, during 2013, 29,000 of uncollectible accounts receivable were written off. What's the journal entry to write off the receivable? Huh? What? Go ahead. Debit what? I'm going to debit the allowance for the amount that was written off, which was what? 29000 What do I credit? I credit the accounts receivable for 29000 because I'm writing it off, right? Person can't pay me? Now, when I debit it for 29000 what becomes the balance in here now? Yeah. 
Good. I got a debit of 13000 in here. That's the debit balance right now. 13000 Now, they tell me that they determine that uh, past experience indicates the allowance should be 10% of the balance in the receivable account. What is the balance in the receivable account? What is the balance in the receivable account? 200000 so they want there to be 10% of the balance in the allowance account. They want 20,000 in there, don't they? Right now they've got a debit of 13. They want to end up with a credit of 20,000, right? How will they get a credit of 20,000 if they got a debit of 13? Come on, guys, that's the easiest question I ask you. I mean, this is an accounting class, and it's time for you to know that stuff. If I've got a debit of 13 and I want to end up with a credit of 20, what do I have to do? Debit this or credit this? Credit it for what? 33,000, don't I? Okay. So I credit it for 33,000. And why is that? Oh, Scott scared when I looked at those choices. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm looking right here. I'm like, what the heck did I do? It's up here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to debit what? Bad debt expense for 33000 and credit the allowance for 33000 That brings the balance to 20000 which is what they wanted. So the answer is C. Right? Okay. Good. Number 25. A company has net sales of 950000 for the year, and it is estimated the uncollectible account will be 2% of sales. If the allowance account has a credit balance of 2000 prior, the balance after will be what? So we've got the allowance. We've got what? 2000 and we're using percent of sales. Do we care what the amount is that's in there right now? We do not. So we just take the 950,000 times what? 0 0.02 gives me 19,000. I've already got two. I credit it for another 19. So now the balance is 21. 2 approaches percent of sales just put the percent of sales percent of receivable we're going to have to figure out what do we want in there and adjust it to up or down to what we want it to be right usually it's adjusted up in most of the problems but it could be an adjustment down like that thousand dollars that we had in the example that i showed you where we took it out of the bad debt expense bad debt expense went from 14 to 13 could be an adjustment down Number 26, Chandler Company had net credit sales of 1,250,000, 125,000, I should say, on January 1st, 2013. The allowance for doubtful accounts had a credit balance of 27,000 in the allowance. During 2013, 42,000 of uncollectible receivables were written off. Journal entry to write off accounts receivable. Debit the allowance, 42000 credit, accounts receivable, 42000 right, to write it off? Okay, it's good. So when we go ahead and we debit the allowance, 42000 what's the balance in here now? What's the balance in here now? Thank you. Debit balance of 15000 Okay, good. So I got a debit balance of 15000 in there. Past experience indicates that the allowance should be 10% of the balance in the account receivable. If account receivable is 330, 330,000 times 0 0.10, they want what? 33,000 in there? So if I've got a 15 debit and I want a credit balance of 33,000, what do I have to do here? Credit how much? Credit 48000 to bring the balance to 33000 right? I mean, that last part is the easiest question I ask. And this could be any account. 
that if I said if it's a debit and I'm trying to turn it into a credit of 33, you have to do what? You have to put enough weights on the other side of the scale to completely wipe out the what? 15 and then what? Another 33,000 of weights to bring it to 33,000. So if you take 15 plus 33, that's 48, isn't it? So I'll debit the bad debt expense, 48,000, credit the allowance. Okay. Number 27. Oh boy, double declining balance. Remember that from chapter 8? Okay, so I've got the situation here where they want to know the book value of the asset after year two. Now, I put the asset into use on October 1st, year one, at a cost of 100000 Salvage value is 20, and it's a five-year life. If it's a five-year life, I take one divided by five years equals what? 20%, and then for double declining balance, which should always be double declining in this class, I double it. Will it always be 40%? No. no. Okay. So what happens? I take this 100,000 times the 40%, but since they didn't use the asset until October, it's all of October, all of November, all of December, three months. So for that first year, I just take what? Depreciation of 90,000. Then to get the second year's depreciation, I take that new book value times the 40%, and that's now going to be what? 36,000 for the entire year, too. And so when I take that depreciation off of the old book value, that 36,000 gives me a new book value at the end of year two of 54,000. And so on. Okay. Now, the other way you could calculate this, which might be a little bit more intuitive now that I'm thinking about it, would be to take the 100000 that I paid for it, and what's the depreciation for year one? What was the depreciation expense for year one? 10000 because I only used it those three months, right? Depreciation for year two is how much? 36,000. So if you take the two years depreciation expense, that's what's in the accumulated depreciation account. And so you could also get the 54,000 that way. To me, is a little more straightforward than the way they showed you there. Okay. Okay, good. Number 28. Inventory, FIFO, first in, first out. Company has inventory of eight units. It cost of 200000 on October 1st. On October 2nd, it purchased 20 units at 205 each. 11 units were sold on October 4th. What is the in, uh, perpetual inventory method? What is the value of the inventory at October Fourth, if I sold eight, if I sold eleven, and I sell these October first ones first, do I have any more of those left? Good, those are gone. And then what? I still have sold what? Um, how many did I sell? I sold eleven, so I must have to sell what? Three more, but these are now at the 205 price. Okay, so if I sell uh, I had 20, and if I sell three of those, that means I'm left with what? 17 times the 205. Sold all the eight. Of those 20, I sold three of them to bring me up to 11, right? Which means I only had 17 left. I'm done. Are you guys done? Okay, good. All right, so um, where do you want to do the rest of these? Huh? 
Okay. All right. So I will see you on not next Monday because we have the holiday the Monday after that. Bring a Scantron. This right here? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah.